You do not have to be polite to a white nationalist that... Hey, my people. So this is part four of this. Please go watch one through three. I'm not going to recap. There's just too much going on. I am not coming at her. I am actually a follower of hers, and I usually like her content. But I completely disagree on her stance on this. And this is all being laid out in this story. The reason why it is so long is because it is extremely important to understand the details of this kind of a situation. On part three, we left off with the death threats, harassment, the therapy goats getting killed. That wasn't the worst of it. When it got to the worst of it, the night that I thought I was going to actually die, my seven-year-old stepdaughter comes in and she goes, Mom, I think the house is on fire. I'm like, what? And I panic. I'm like, okay, let's get outside and I'll check and see what's going on. Our doors were barred shut. And I went out into the porch area between the two duplexes to try to figure out a way to get out. You could see the other side was on fire. We ended up having to break some windows. We got the kids out. My ex got all the animals out. When I went next door, I found the door open and the house ablaze. Ex comes running over and she goes, the phone lines are cut again. I can't get help. It's 3 a.m. in winter, and the only payphone in town is six blocks away, and we have four flat tires on each vehicle. When I went around the side of the house to get the hose, I noticed that the hose was cut and the handles were busted off on the spigots, so no water. I ended up taking a feeder shovel and scooping snow into the house to stop the fire, to which then I walked the six blocks up to the payphone and called 911. The fire department never showed. They never showed. That's when it was like, we need to move or we're going to die. The whole reason for these videos is to explain. I've stood up for the right. I was an activist. I was on TV. I went to and spoke on Capitol Hill. Private conversations with governors about things that could be done to change things. And I was hunted down by white nationalists, bigots. I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a grand wizard in Dubuque, Iowa on the steps of the courthouse to keep them from putting in an after-school activity program in my nephew's high school. That's what started everything for me. I had to have police escorts to and from work. I lost jobs. Couldn't go into my house until the police cleared it. You don't have the right to yell at someone. You don't have the right to guilt someone. You do not have the right to shame someone and to not wanting to stand up to their face and put them and their family in danger. That is a privilege a lot of us just don't have. There is nothing wrong with choosing to live. There are things a lot of people do that are not done in people's face, but it doesn't mean they support it. There's a whole nother side to this situation on why people don't stand up to someone's face, and those stories need to be told too.